friends and welcome to Obsidian Soft. As winters are here and it is the holiday season, so I thought that I should teach something entertaining in this tutorial instead of something serious. Don't worry, you will learn about a new concept in even this tutorial, something called abstraction. More about this later. So today we will make a snow globe app, that is, when we will shake our phone or tablet, snow will start falling on a beautiful scenery. I've chosen a wintry scene with a snowman. You can select a Christmas background or a city background from the internet. Let's look at the demo. Did you like it? So let's begin. First create a new project. Go to project, start new project and name it snow globe. Upload media by going to upload file. I'm choosing a wintry background with a snowman. Also, I want my snow globe to play music when the device is shaken besides snowing. Therefore, I'm going to be uploading a music file too. I have edited the music file to make it just 15 seconds because we don't want the music to keep on playing even when all the snowflakes have disappeared. I'm uploading the music file. I will give the link to the image and the music file in the video description. Make screen one's properties, align horizontal center, align vertical center. The screen orientation should be portrait, and I'm going to hide the title bar. So I'm going to make title visible false. I will uncheck it. From drawing an animation, drag and drop a canvas, make it fill parent in terms of height and fill parent in terms of width too. Make the background image, the image that we had uploaded earlier. From media, drag and drop a player here. Check for it play only in foreground and make the source the music file that we had uploaded earlier. From sensors, drag and drop this accelerometer sensor because that will be used to detect when the device is shaking. Last but not the least, from drawing an animation, drag and drop a ball sprite. Okay, This will act like a snowflake or snowball. Now we have to change the properties of this ball. So make the heading 270, which will make it come down because 270 degrees means that you are coming down. So heading means the direction. We have used ball sprites while making our Space Invader game. The interval will be 100, but the speed will be 5. So it will come down at the speed of 5 pixels every 100 milliseconds, okay? And we have to make the paint color white. Okay, we need more than one ball. And recently I learned that we can copy paste and duplicate even components in MIT App Inventor, a very cool and well needed feature. So just click on this ball one, make sure it's chosen. Use Command C or Command V for Mac OS and Control C, copy and control V paste for Windows laptops or computers to duplicate this sprite. And this sprite will be duplicated with exactly the same property. So that's what we need. So ball one, make sure it's chosen. I'm clicking command C and then I'm clicking command V. And as you can see that the ball has been duplicated and I'm going to make 25 of them. So just keep on doing it. And you will see that they are being created at the same place, so I can drag them and give them a different position. But that's not really necessary because I will be giving them random locations in the code. So just copy and paste and make 25 of them. I have to just copy once and then paste them until I have 25 balls. And the last ball, 25. So let's go to the block section. So we have to give random locations to all these balls and there's so many of them. So fortunately, we have this concept called abstraction in programming and using that, we can write code for any ball. 
So if I go down inside this any component, you will see if I click on it, I have this any ball, this component. So by, by using this, I will be writing code for all the balls at the same time. And this concept is called abstraction. We will be writing lesser lines of code this way. So first of all, let's make a procedure to give a random location and size to the balls. So I'm going to go to my procedures and take the top one, the one that does not return a result. And I'm going to name it, give random position and size to ball. And this procedure takes in an input. So just click on the cogwheel and drag this input from here to the right hand side. So now we have an input. I'm going to rename it to ball. Now we are going to use abstraction. So go to any component, click on it and all these options will be available. I'm going to click on any ball and I have this block called set ball dot radius. Okay. And inside of component, I'm going to give it get ball. So this is this ball, the getter for it. And two is a random number between four and six. So I'm going to go to maths and get the random number block and make it four and six. Okay. Duplicate this block. And now I'm going to choose X from here. So the X position of the ball. And here, the random number is between 10, okay? I want to give it the width of the canvas here. So if I click on canvas, I can get its width, okay? And I need a minus block because I want to subtract a few numbers from it. I don't want it to touch the edge when the ball is shown because I will be checking for edge detection for the ball to disappear when it reaches the bottom edge. So I don't want the ball to touch any of the edges while it's falling. Okay, so I'm going to go to maths and get the minus block and plug in canvas.width on the left hand side and on the right hand side I have 10. Let's get rid of this. So my ball's X position will be a value between 10 and the width of the canvas minus 10. Okay. Similarly, I want to give it a Y position. X position means the horizontal position and Y means the vertical position. So I'm going to give it a position between 50 and here I'm going to choose the canvas's height and canvas height minus 200. So I've tested these positions so they turn out to be really nice and give a full snowing effect, okay? Also make sure that this is Y, okay? So we have given a random X position and a random Y position to our snowball. Now I'm going to create a global variable and this will contain our ball, all the balls. So this is a ball list and make it an empty list. And this is the only part of the code where you will have to write code for all the balls. So when the screen is initialized, I want to add all the balls, all the 25 balls to this balls list. So if I click on screen, I have screen dot initialized block. So th this event is run when the screen starts and only runs once per screen. Okay, so I am going to set my ball list and I'm going to give it a make a list from lists. And here I'm going to give it, now remember we have to give it all the balls. So there will be 25 of them. So first of all, I have to make slots for all 25 of them. So four, five. So I think I have 25 of them. I will add one more if I need it. So I'm just going to go to my ball one and go down and get its block ball one. 
and I can also copy paste it. So again, control C, control V, control C, control V, again control V, a lots of control V's, you don't have to control C all the time. This is the most tedious work here. So make it ball two, ball three, ball four, ball five, ball six, ball seven, and on to 25. Okay, so that was a perfect fit. So all my balls are inside my ball list. Now click on accelerometer sensor, get its when shaking event block, and inside it, I am going to do something for all the balls. So if I go to controls, I have this block for each item in list. So I can change the item to ball and my list is my ball list. Okay. So I got it from the variables, the getter. And I am going to call my random position and size procedure and give it get ball okay so if i hover over ball i will get the getter for it okay and i am also going to set my ball visible to true so again i need an any component any ball block so if i click on any ball i have set ball dot visible and inside here, the component is this get ball. So if I hover over it, and I'm going to make it true. I want to show my snow only when someone shakes the device, okay? Last but not the least, we have to make the ball invisible when it reaches the bottom of the screen. So instead of edge reached for each ball, we will again use abstraction. But first of all, make it for the first ball. So click on ball one and get its when ball one dot edge reached event and again click on ball one and get ball one dot visible the setter for it set ball one dot visible to false okay and if i right click on my event i have this option called make generic and if i click on it now this will handle the edge reached event for all the balls all are 25 balls because we are using the concept of abstraction that when any ball dot edge reached okay one thing that i forgot to do was starting the music so if i click on my player i have this call player dot start and i want to start it when the device is shaken so just before the for loop put it in there okay so this will play the music when the device is shaken. So we are done with this fun app in so little time as we used abstraction and any component blocks to avoid repetition of code. So I hope you like this video and this tutorial. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, kindly do so so that you don't miss any of the cool things that I have planned for you. Thank you for watching my video today. Happy holidays. Have a good day and goodbye.